Okay, welcome to my new root series, uh, which I call root examples, because here I want to show specific examples, um, how you do certain things in root, maybe more efficient than somebody would do who is new to root. Now, I cannot promise that what I'm doing, of course, is the most efficient way how to do it, but this is the way how I am usually doing it. And uh, yeah, uh, I was asked in, in different tutorial uh, lectures, certain questions um, related to different things. And I would try to like to cover uh, these things now in, in these examples. So um, one of the questions um, I was asked is um, how to read in multiple um, text files. And also one question was how to plot different information from these text files in different histograms. Um, and I will try to combine these two questions now and all examples which I will show also in the near future will be on a quite advanced level. So I, um, yeah, I propose that you first go, if you are new to Root and you have never worked with this before, then I propose that you should go through my tutorial lessons before and then after that come back here to watch this video. Okay. Um, in this video, um, I would like, as I said, to show how to read in multiple text files for that. I have created a new folder example and um, there we have now 10 text files um, which are numbered from 0 to 9 and now in we will write a loop which can uh, with which we can loop over all these files read in all information and then when you take a look at these files I opened one here you can see that each file contains six columns uh, this is just some random uh, some more, more or less random numbers that I created. This could be, for example, uh, the momentum of particles, um, x, y, and z direction, and this from another particle, x, y, and z direction from a particle decay maybe into particles. Yeah? It doesn't matter so much. Actually, these are Monte Carlo simulation results, but it's just arbitrary, um, only to show how it works in principle. Yeah? And then we can directly start as usual. So we go, we want to read this file out and every of these columns here, each of these columns, we want to plot in a separate histogram. So we go to our multi C, which I created new. This is our script file and we create a new function as usual with the same uh, function name as the script name, uh, which was in this case multi. Yeah. And then we will start um, to create our histograms or to define our histograms. Yeah? And as I said, we have six columns. We want to create one histogram for each column. Yeah? So we can write here th1f uh, hist. And then uh, normally when we create it on the heap, we have to put our new statement here. But uh, now uh, we want to create six histograms simultaneously. So instead of uh, creating six times, the same histogram, we just create now an array of pointers. Uh, so um, in this case, we have an array of six histograms and then we have to create a for loop here, which goes from zero to six. And then we can uh, write here hist i. So we refer now to the to the ith entry of our um, uh, array and we can write here new th1 f. And then we have to give, as usual, first the name of the histogram. If we give the same name to all histograms, it will give a memory, possible uh, a warning message that there is a um, possible memory leak. So what I'm normally doing, I want to actually give every histogram a separate name. So for that, we can use the function for. Yeah? You can use, for example, also string stream in order to convert here this uh, integer into a string. But with form, it's a little bit faster and easier. Yeah? So for example, I can write here form hist and then uh, behind this we make a, a percentage sign and a d which means now this function expects a integer and when we write here comma i this means that then this integer here is converted into a string so the first histogram will get a hist zero the second one will get the name hist one hist two hist three and so on which i find the most convenient way to do yeah, and then as usual, um, we have to define a title. So we can maybe just call it histogram. And then we have to define the number of bins, maybe 100. And then we go from minus 5 to 5, because this I found out already is a good, a good um, yeah, starting point, actually. Maybe instead of, uh, because we will use this later also again. So instead of uh, putting it here, we can also define a new variable name. And this could be a t string, for example. And then we can write here name 
uh, and then it, we have to put in our function here. Now this is just uh, to make the things a little bit easier. So then we want also to, to distinguish between these different histograms because we want to plot all of them in the same canvas. So um, what I would like to do is to change the color of each histogram and set different markers. So what I what we can do here is to write uh, hist i and then we refer to each i histogram. Um, and then we can write here, for example, set marker style i plus 20, yeah, which means we start with the number 20, which is maybe a square and then we add the one integer to this. We just increment this and then the next one would be 21. Um, which is uh, maybe in this case a circle and so on. I'm not 100% sure, I don't know it by heart, but I found out that when you start with 20, then you get quite nice results. And then the same uh, we can um, we can do for the color. So we also want to change the color. And again, if we start with, uh, with I think zero is black if I'm not completely wrong, so we can even start with that. Uh, one would be, I think, red, uh, two would be blue and so on. So we also add just I, to that. Um, yeah, and um, this is in principle everything what we have to do. I would, however, uh, as I said, I would like to plot all of them in one histogram, in one canvas. So I would like to create a new stack, as I have explained also in one of my tutorial lessons. Uh, so we create here a new th stack, which we give the name just stack. And as the title, maybe momentum distributions. As I said, this could be, for example, momentums, no, momenta. And then uh, we can um, give here a title for the uh, x axis, in this case, maybe PGEV. I hope that this is correct. And entries yeah, for, for the Y label or for the Y title. Okay. Um, and then we can directly write here uh, hey, h stack at and then we have to, uh, sorry, this is of course not a string. This is uh, directly our object, which we have to place here. So we have to directly insert our hist i into our h stack. And then maybe what I would also like to do uh, just uh, for convenience is uh, to create a legend. So in this case, we uh, create a legend and I found out when we place it at 0 0.7, 0 uh, 0.6, 0 0.9 and 0 0.9, then it looks quite uh, quite okay. Uh, it's on the right, correct place. And then we have to write here at entry and then again uh, hist i. Then we, this is the reason why I uh, have chosen a separate variable for the name because then we can also insert the name here directly into our legend. And then as I said, we plot the markers. So we want to put the points into our uh, into our legend and not anymore the lines. Yeah, and now we can test this and just to make sure that we didn't do any typing mistake. And uh, yeah, we, we just run now our uh, multi C file. Uh, and uh, yeah, as usual, I have done a typing mistake because I forgot here uh, the new. Okay, uh, yeah, now it didn't get any error message, so it means everything is perfectly okay. And now we come to our main part. So now we want to loop over all the text files that we have. So we have to create here a new loop below that. Um, and in this case, we have 10 text files, so we have to loop until 10, i++. And now um, we, uh, similar to what we have done before, I would like now to um, define the file name actually, not the histogram name, but the file name. And uh, yeah, in this case, we use again this function form yeah, because we have to uh, convert here this integer into a string. Yeah? So we, our, our string should be something like input zero and then zero, one, two, and so on. So we can write here input zero uh, percentage sign d uh, comma i. And uh, yeah, then, then we have defined our file name and now we can use fstream. So either you write fstream and then uh, iOS in, or you can directly use if stream, which is a little bit um, faster and uh, yeah, maybe nicer to write. And uh, the, the name of our file, um, the object should be called in file and then in file open. And then we have to do nothing else except insert here the file name into uh, this and then we can also directly close it. So we will not forget that later, although it is an ASCII file, so it doesn't matter so much, but maybe it's better to uh, be on the safe side. Yeah, so now we, uh, for every 
um, step in our loop, we open one new text file and read this out. Now, so at the end, you have just the same as if you would read out a large text file. And again, we can test this to make sure that we have no typing mistake and it looks quite good. So, and now um, we create as usual, uh, as we have done this also several times before, a while loop because now we want to loop over all entries into uh, in our um, text files. And as I said, each text file has six columns. So we create another uh, for loop inside that. And this time we call the variable J and we loop from zero to six, which are the columns. And for every column then, uh, we have to create a new uh, double variable, which we call maybe val for value. Then we have to uh, put the value of each column yeah, into this, uh, into this uh, double variable. And then we have to now refer to our histogram, yeah, but his j in this case, because we want to use the zero, one, two, three, and so on one uh, to separate these different columns. And then we can write here fill val. Yeah? And of course, as usual, uh, we have to write here if in file end of file, then uh, break the uh, while loop. Otherwise, if you don't do that, then this will create troubles. So again, we can just test it one time. Yeah, it works well. So no typing mistake. And now we can actually proceed in plotting our histogram. So you can see it's, it's also quite short and efficient code. Uh, instead of maybe defining everything separately, um, uh, either you can do this maybe in, in, in different um, yeah, in different script files, for example, or you can define, uh, you can loop 10 times over all text files and so on. But, but of course, this, this uh, is not readable in, in a good way. So it's maybe better to really actually uh, make the code as short and as readable as possible. So now we can uh, create a new canvas. And uh, yeah, then we can just uh, write here H stack draw and we want to draw the points as I said the marker so we have to write a P here and we have to put in no stack because we don't want to stack the histograms we want to just put them as an overlay and uh, yeah then we also want to of course draw our legend and uh, we can make some more a little bit more beautification here so we can write here set grid uh, C1 set tick X and uh, C1 set tick Y. So the histogram or the, the canvas looks a little bit more beautiful. And now we can plot this. And as you can see, it works directly out of the box uh, without having any issue. So we have now our um, four histograms here. Okay, as you can see, the hist zero has no marker. Yeah? So the reason for that is because uh, the color zero is I think white, not black. So we have to start actually with one and not with zero. And when you now run the script, then you can see we have uh, our different markers and different colors for the different histograms. And uh, most of them are overlapping because I think the X and Y uh, momentum in this case is maybe the same. So um, it doesn't change anything. And here, these are maybe the Z momenta, which you can see, and they are shifted here to the right. But in any case, you can do this now, uh, or you can use this method. This is just an example, as I said. So you can use this method for any type of um, input file that you have. Yeah? So no matter what kind of text files you have, um, when as long as they are separated uh, and you can uh, read them out in, in such a way, uh, you, can, you can really uh, type very short code for that. And um, yeah, if you want to plot uh, different columns, for example, uh, or also different text files into different histograms. It's always possible to create an array of histograms and then loop over that. Uh, and uh, then at the end in your main loop, you can um, insert the values into these histograms. Yeah. So I hope that this was beneficial and you were able to then uh, um, process in a way that you can use this example and, um, and use it for your own purpose. And I hope that um, in general, uh, you like the approach that you learn something new, and uh, yeah, as usual, um, uh, yeah, if you if you if you like the video, please hit the like button. Uh, please subscribe my channel if if you don't want to miss any f uh, future videos about this. And uh, if you have any further questions, which I should cover in these examples, maybe just put it in the comment section. Uh, um, yeah, and then I will uh, try to cover them as soon as possible. And until then. 
Uh, hopefully, see you soon.